project came in just under a million dollars, and actually that's under budget, but it was spread out over three fiscal periods, so it's an extremely economical, complete restoration of a park. And uh, the detail for historical purposes is absolutely right on. For instance, you see the coving over the, uh, the, the pond here. Had we completely raised the pond down to ground zero and rebuilt it, it would not have been nearly as costly, but it wouldn't have been the original pond. So what we did was cove over it and by getting samples of the kind of coving and paving that was done back then. And then we had four or five different spray treatments put on it. So what you're looking at now is obviously a replication. Hi, I'm Ellen Stern Harris. I was a member of the Recreation and Parks Commission when the restoration of Will Rogers began. And one of the things I'm particularly pleased about is its adherence to its French origins. They did put down the decomposed granite, which uh, was the authentic and appropriate pathway. And for that, I'm very, very pleased. Uh, there was a considerable amount of resources for the city budget that were allocated to this, and as Ellen said, appropriately so. But they've been working on this since um, last uh, summer, and uh, this is the second phase of a two-phase project. Please, ladies and gentlemen, uh, join us up here and take a look at the plaque. There's some beautiful words written about Will Rogers. We thank you all for coming this afternoon. Please enjoy the park and our beautiful city of Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills. This right was the live? old house, the 925 Beverly Drive. Right. And this is down near in a little pond in the backyard. So this park here that was is. like, a, in a way, it was like, you know, it was a city park, but it was really like your park too, wouldn't it be? You would have come down here. No, we used to come down here occasionally. Here's that's at the shot. Beverly Hills house. Here's your mother. Yeah. And that's right Here's out in brother. front, in the front of the house. And the pawn shot is this one here. Yeah, that's in the back, that's facing towards Lexington cool. and uh, Crescent. So let's see, let's see your mom and you and your brother and sister. That's the little log cabin that was in the corner of Beverly Drive and Lexington. You could spend the night there and mm -hmm. we barbecued out in front. That's the mother on the left, Betty, Jimmy right here. This is a Will Rogers on the front porch of the Beverly Hills house. Mother, uh, Billy's up above, Mary and Jimmy on the left. But uh, when you lived here, I mean, uh, you went to what school did you go to here? What was here to go to? Beverly Hills Grammar School. Which was Hawthorne. Which was Hawthorne School, right? Very good. Right. And then Beverly Hotel. Vista. Beverly but Vista. I didn't go there. Right. We lived north of the track. And you were right across from the Beverly Hills Hotel, of course. And uh, Well, we lived there for a year. Was that before your house, during your house, or after It was your after house? we tore the house down. Oh, really? So that Had to live somewhere. <laughs> but what about the ranch? There, we're building the house there then. Very interesting. But we were on the corner of Beverly and Lexington. Right. Did you live in a bungalow at the hotel? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You had your own bungalow. Well, we lived in one of the bungalows. One of the, one of the bungalows. I'll be right. damned if I can remember which one. <laughs> number 23, and they demolished it. See, he knows, number 23. <laughs> I didn't know that. And your father also was, you know, um, uh, honored as the honorary mayor of Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. He had um, a big ceremony for Will right on the front lawn adjacent to this park. Some of the kids were there. Were you at this big ceremony in which they honored him as the honorary mayor? Yeah. You probably knew friends that were uh, from film stars, right? I mean, young kids that were film star <clears throat> people or industrialists or important people that uh, became famous later? Well, we went to school with Al and Minowa and Bobby Bell mm -hmm. of Bell Air Bell. Alfonso Bells, yes. Bryant Warsburn, his Bryant dad was Warsburn. an actor. They lived up in that end of Did Beverly. Did you ever know Hobart Bosworth? Did you ever remember him? I remember him very well. Right. He used to ride his white Arab horse up and down the bridle path, the first Arabs to get into Beverly Hills. Right, it was him. And was the horse. You know about the polo lounge at the hotel. Uh, 
I don't know when the polo lounge was first put in. In the late 20s. There wasn't any booze in the late 20s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Except uh, a prohibition booze, of course. That's right. <laughs> we might have that. But there wasn't any booze then. Right. And, and I don't remember the polo lounge until, I'm going to have to say probably the late 30s. Late 30s. So polo lounge was, a, was actually the children's playroom at one time and the children's dining room. Then it became sort of like a lounge where many of these guys did come to. They might not have been drinking yet, but it's true, possibly true, that the polo lounge was named in a memorial, you might say, to earlier days happening in that room. So they later put a polo picture up there showing people playing polo. Of course, Will Rogers was the one that really instituted polo in Beverly Hills, in the area of Pacific Palisades, is, of course, where his ranch was. So that's where you guys moved to yeah. and lived at the ranch for mm -hmm. years on. I get down there every couple of months. Good, good. I figured you probably uh, missed a place like that, I would think. Well, yeah, you do, good. but uh, it's a long way to drive. Yes. And I, go, I try to get down every couple of months. Where do you live now? Bakersfield. Oh, I see. Yeah. That's right. I remember that he, your brother was here, and they did interviews here in the park and at the hotel. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, your brother was in starred in the film, was yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, uh, the Will Rogers story. That's right. How long were you in Beverly Hills? I mean, how many years do you think you were here? Uh, about ten. Oh, that's good. Went to Webb in Claremont, and then went to Pomona College in Claremont. Good. Good. But your roots, of course, were Beverly Hills, more or less. I mean, you must. Well, this is where we grew up. You must have some feeling for, uh, you know, the oh, yeah. things around here that haven't changed too much. It must be nice to see that. Yeah, there's a lot that hasn't really changed. Right. I mean, yeah. to any great degree. Right. Certain things in, down in the uh, business district. Uh, right now, but around here, no. A lot of the houses are still the same. Mm -hmm. But I know the hotel, you remember it being pink during your days. It's been pink for so long, I don't remember it being anything else. <laughs> I now, I, now, I'm not going to say it was. I don't know. No, and, and it, you rode on the revital path, I'm sure, did you? <coughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah, we were all over it. Mm -hmm. On horses, on bicycles, we even drove cars on it. Uh, I know that there is a, uh, the Beverly Hills Hotel used to have the horses. And I remember I rode up all through Benedict. Right. Coldwater, right. Uh, Franklin. Right. Right. We path. rode up every canyon around yeah, here. Mm -hmm. Bridal path went from down yonder to yeah. down here to there. Never got outside of the city limits, but it was known as the bridal path. What was it? Ye bridal path Ye. from the mountains to the sea. Right. Good. It never made the mountains and it never made the sea. Right. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's a good. That's a good ending. Hey, Ned, I'm Mark Wanamaker of Beverly Hills Historical Society, and we are here at the uh, Beverly Hills Will Rogers Memorial Park, and today we have different guests that we've been interviewing, and among them, and they will introduce themselves, being here at this wonderful festive occasion. I'm Estrella Milam Satika, and Will Rogers was my great-grandmother's brother. Sister, yeah. <laughs> I'm Mary America Lynn Meredith, and I'm Will Rogers' great 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 grandniece. And what's up is her father, she's my aunt, her father's mother's mother was Will's sister, sister. Sally Clementine. Uh, where did you grow up? Oklahoma City. Oh, so you're, you're all Oklahoman? Yeah, we grew up there. Actually, I'm moving uh, back. How does that affect you having Will Rogers being such a famous uh, relative? Or does it affect you? That, <laughs> oh, wait, oh, it does. It's, it's a matter of trying to say it without getting in trouble. Um, <laughs> Will Rogers was kind of the liveliest member of the family, and the family was a little bit more staid and, and conservative. We're and not related, are we? Yes, we are. On, on this I side of the family. All nuts, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. No, good. We want to hear everything. Yeah. <laughs> In other words, there are conservative members, and then there's all crazy members. Is that it? Is that how it works? Well, kind of. How about not crazy? Members. How about more, more charming and more... <laughs> how about flamboyant or... Um, They're all that way. Or um, colorful. Personal, yeah. They're all that way. Colorful, I'll put it that mm -hmm. way. Well, that's how well it was. It, in a way, it's almost like right, his genes would, uh, would kind of drift down into other members of the family. Cause because Jimmy seems to be very colorful character. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm sure others must be in their own ways, I would think. Yeah. 
Well, um, Bob Anderson was saying something about he would he and his family would go to the ranch and stay with Uncle Will and his family, and one of the boys would sneak out and come in at about five o'clock, mm -hmm. and then Uncle Will would come in like 20 minutes later and say, "Okay, it's time to go roping." That's the same tactic that my father uses oh, no. on all of us. Uh, and I, yes, yeah, right? there is. It's 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 well. Uh, well practiced tactics keep the boys in control but it's amazing if you think about it you know will died you know in the mid 30s it's amazing how he died way before his time really and to this day we're talking about him now as the strong as his personality mu must have been that he's still around I mean it's so amazing everything in Beverly Hills when we talk about it will Rogers name always comes up and not just with his characters, with many other things. Because he was an honorary mayor, and he lived right over here, and he was at the hotel, and he was everywhere. And to this day, we all still have Will Rogers on our minds, believe it or not. It's amazing. That's surprising. Yeah, I've lived in California for five years, and I never connected Will Rogers to California in any way, shape, or form. And then I saw those posters for that Sid Mad movie. Have you seen that, The Cherokee Kid? And I was just like, so mad. And excuse me, there's one Cherokee Kid, and it ain't Sid Mad. For the Will Rogers play in New York, the Will Rogers on Broadway. Play. Mm -hmm. with, 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 with. I saw that with Grandfather. I'm really glad they took the topless scene out. But if, you know, but anyway, the well, it's nice for us to know that he really is appreciated and it's not yeah. us just going, oh, well, he's from Oklahoma, so he must be wonderful. Yeah. No, no, it, is, uh, it makes sense. And uh, now the plaque behind us is now it's another permanent reminder of him for people that have no idea who he was and how great he was. But being a film historian, as you can imagine, and a studio historian, Will Rogers is very close to us relating to Fox Studios and the old early Goldwyn studio days, when he was a star with those two companies. Hmm. Goldwyn Company in 1919. He was one of their biggest stars in Culver City. So Culver City claims a bit of Will Rogers also. Some of the films are available. That would be fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. Occasionally they re release But them. Silence, we're talking. And yeah. Silence. Mm -hmm. We're talking early Silence. Like, like The Roping Fool. Well, yes. That was, that that was that right. You know about it. Silly. All right, so then there's Doubling yeah. for Romeo. I don't know if you know that one. That's the question. How does the tradition of the family affect your daily life in Oklahoma, yes? It basically shapes who we were and who we are and who we're going to be. I mean, there's, I mean, Uncle Will, I mean, that's one part of the family and very well appreciated but there's a long family history yeah and some of it's colorful yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's a good word for it. a little some of it's a little more restrictive and but it's very strong tradition within um the, the mixed blood cherokee and i mean it's always a very proud sense of being leaders in the community and having a very strong community feeling and a responsibility. That's a tradition that's what you started here and goes down also. I mean, well, he's honorary mayor and he was involved with the city council mm -hmm. and the chamber of commerce. Yeah. But I think, I think Will totally affected all of our lives just because we always had every book he's ever written available to us. So I mean, I've read, you know, at least four of them. And then our other cousins have written books, so we're like, oh, you know, Paul McSpad left. She's my cousin. I have to write about her, read what she wrote. She and wasn't then, a cousin. She was an aunt. I don't know. Everyone's a cousin. <laughs> Your fifth cousin, once removed. Well, you know what? She's probably our aunt and our cousin, but we won't go that, there. Yeah. <laughs> Some places you friends are. But I remember being a little kid and going to the 100th um, birthday up in Clearmore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, well it's, it's just um, a, a sense of pride in the family, but kind of a duty also. Right. A Seems duty also. Beverly Hills uh, uh, Will Rogers Memorial Park. Today is February, in February of 1997, and we're here with many of the different relatives that have come out for the uh, plaque dedication that's behind us. And we have here, and, and why don't you introduce yourself and tell you who you are. My name is William Thomas Milam, Sr. Uh, I prefer to be called Tom, however. Good. I'm from Oklahoma City. And how are you related to Will? Well, my grandmother Sally was Will's oldest sister. Ah, uh -huh. And she, after Will's mother died, Sally is the one responsible for the rearing of Will Rogers. And, uh, mm -hmm. So you grew up more or less uh, right in the family, pretty much, oh, yes. I would say. 
I was 17 when he was killed. And, uh, so he was at Fox Studio at the time. He was. You must have visited him at the studio and at his house here. And Well, we were at the ranch. Mm -hmm. uh, Mainly the ranch. Down to the portion. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, we visited for about a week. And uh, I remember his roping area. Yes. Uh, where the sides of the enclosure were uh, at an angle. Why was the enclosure um, on an angle? So that he could rope the, the calves and uh -huh. the, the uh, fence would not Get encumber in the, the, the... He came back to Oklahoma City regularly, I would think, to see family, is well, that it? not Oklahoma City particularly, but uh, Chelsea and Claremore and Tulsa. Oh. When he would fly through, he would always stop at Claremore or Tulsa and uh, then I'd get to ride on the plane from Claremore to Tulsa where they would hang her at the service for the night. But uh, obviously uh, Will affected the family in such a way, being such a famous uh, personality and all, and uh, how did it affect your family? How did it affect you in your daily life, say, when you were growing up? Well, I know that when I stayed with my grandmother, I was too young to drive at that time. But I had a horse, and my job was to go to the post office and get the paper and bring it back to grandmother so she could read his article. That was the first item of business every day. Uh, well, he was a wonderful person. He, I was fortunate enough to know him. And when, when he would stay with my grandmother, and he would stay with either sister while my Aunt Maud was still alive in Chelsea. Uh, but after Aunt Maud died, he stayed with my grandmother Sally all the time. So I got to see him a great deal. Great deal. Huh? Impressed me of, about him was the way he loved people. And we could be driving down the street and he would see someone whom you wouldn't give a second thought to, but he remembered from some time in the past. And he'd say, hold it, hold it. And he'd get out and go out and talk, maybe for 30 minutes while everyone else in the car waited for him to finish his visit. He was interested in the person and what they were doing, what they were thinking. It was a pleasure to be around him, and I've never heard him say a harsh word about anyone. It must have been a terrible, terrible calamity on, uh, on hearing the news, of course, his terrible plane crash and all of this. Of course, the whole country was in mourning for a long time, but the family must have been uh, devastated by this, or did they keep a stiff upper lip and continue on. They kept a sti stiff upper lip. No one went to pieces. Right. Uh, they were heartbroken. But uh, I was fortunate to know Wiley Post and Harold Gaddy and Will Rogers. Uh, Wiley Post was the uh, pilot that, that flew uh, Will and crashed with him and was killed also. Um, another thing about uh, you know Will's career in the film industry, as you probably know, did you ever visit him? Uh, you know, on any of these sets is, yes. or whatever, as you say. Uh, do you remember any of that? Yes. In 1930, we visited here at the ranch, and at the end of that time, he moved to Lake Tahoe for his location, oh. and they took picture, they made movies there in Lake Tahoe. One of the things that happened, I was only 12 years old at the time, but I was sitting, or standing uh, some distance away and I was watching the proceedings of taking shot after shot. And uh, he winked at me and I winked back and the director saw that. So he sent a boy to get me and took me up by him and gave me a chair and sat long, well, 12 year old. But, that was quite something. So you actually went on location? Yes. You didn't visit him at the studio at all? Not at the studio. Really? It's interesting. You went all the way up there. No, oh, we were busy roping and <laughs> yeah. write his uh, stories for the uh, his daily news uh, letter. He would go to the railroad station and put them on the wire to New York. And so any number of times I was with him when he wrote those. From what I understand, he was the highest paid actor, the columnist, radio actor. Whatever he did, he was the highest paid. And from what I understand, he never signed a contract. There's always a handshake. <laughs> 
Those days are over. <laughs> Those days are over.